Here we are looking at two neutrophils. We actually have a boy neutrophil and a girl neutrophil, oddly enough, and I will get to that near the end of this video. But recall that they have these granules uh, that do not have either a negative or a positive charge and therefore do not pick up a special stain. They're neutral, so that's why we call them neutrophils. They're also very active in eating up pathogens such as bacteria and that's why they are also called phagocytes. And also that because they have an interesting shape to their nucleus, this is one of the cells that's called a polymorphonuclear leukocyte or PMN. Neutrophils respond to damage in this tissue outside of the blood vessel and they are able to sense chemical cries for help that the tissues outside the blood vessel are releasing and they can quickly move to the area and the way they do that is to squeeze between the cells of the blood vessel. It is so much easier to squeeze between these cells because it doesn't have a big fat round nucleus like it used to when it was in the bone marrow. The nucleus shrank down so that we have this odd shape but it's so much easier to wiggle between cells to get to the outside tissue. So in the outside tissue, let's say we've been invaded, we've got a cut, we've been invaded by some bacteria. Neutrophils especially like bacteria, so they will move towards that area and they are able to actually engulf these bacteria into their cytoplasm and degrade them. These cells are called phagocytes. In fact, they're called professional phagocytes because that is their main function in the body, is to leave the bloodstream, eat away uh, pathogens if at all possible. These cells, once they leave the bloodstream, they will only survive about one to two days. And after that, the role of phagocytosis will be taken up by the macrophage. Why would we want a short life outside in the tissue? Well, some bacteria actually like to reside inside a cell and act as a parasite. So if that cell is going to die anyway, those bacteria cannot continue to proliferate. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that will make you think twice about eating these cookies is the fact that the main component of pus is neutrophils. So whenever you have pus, if you were able to take a look, you would see cells that look like that. And if you had a single drop of blood or some pus from a victim, you would be able to determine whether it was a male or a female. Isn't that interesting? Just one tiny drop of blood can help us determine that. And this is because in humans, it is presence of that second X chromosome that determines whether you are a female or not. So if you have XX chromosome in your, all of the cells of your body, you are a female. If you have XY, you are a male. Now the males only need to use one X. And guess what? So do the females. Females only use one X chromosome. That other X chromosome is packaged off to the side of the nucleus. And in the neutrophil, this little appendage here represents where that extra X chromosome is packaged off. This is called a drumstick appendage. This is the female neutrophil and that's the male neutrophil. When forensics investigators are looking for a female to determine the victim, they are looking for the presence of this drumstick appendage. If they see that, they know for sure they have a female.